Have you checked out VanillaSoft? It's a sales engagement platform, but what does that mean, right? Well, it means that you can stop your sales reps from cherry picking leads. It means they'll make more than just two or three contact attempts. It means you could potentially triple your sales pipeline. Check it out at VanillaSoft.com. Ten Bound, the world's leading research and advisory firm, 100% focused and dedicated to sales development, is now announcing the Ten Bound Sales Development Conference 2020. This year, we'll welcome over 750 of the top minds in sales development to two major conferences, the New York City Leadership Conference on June 18th and the San Francisco Multitrack Conference on August 17th. Join us at both and learn from the best in sales development in these one-day experiences. Gain the latest intelligence from the 10 Bound Analyst Team, unparalleled training opportunities, and networking with the leaders in our industry at the 10 Bound Sales Development Conference 2020. Go to 10bound.com slash conference to learn more. That's 10bound.com slash conference. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Sales Development Podcast. I'm really excited. We have a success story on the show today. And someone <laughs> who is <laughs> going from success to success and definitely someone that we can all learn from. Manvita Nielsen, now Nielsen, RVP of sales over at Medpricer. How are you doing today? Doing well, David. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? You know, just loving being able to have some positive energy on the show, which is great. <laughs> and we were talking a little bit beforehand that you're in kind of a transition period and a bunch of great stuff is happening to you. If people didn't meet you, at the conference or haven't met you yet. How'd you get into sales development and sales? And then, you know, tell us about your journey to your current position. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and when I hear you know, this question, I, I feel like there's always two types of people who are like, you know, I wanted to be in sales and I always knew that. And then there's some that kind of somehow ended up down that path. So I'm definitely the latter of the two because I'm a psychology major and I chose that because I love talking to people and helping people. That was really my passion. And then I was looking for a job after college and I was looking at SDR roles and I was like, wow, like this sounds like totally different, but almost like the same skill set that I know that I'm that that are my strengths. And so I was becoming more self aware of like what I had wanted to accomplish. And I read this article that like the first job out of college you should go into is sales because it teaches you communication. It teaches you how to be a strong listener and just and customer service is like it's in every job. And so but I you know started working at Blackberry and selling enterprise cybersecurity software, which was yeah, I didn't think that's where I would end up and learned a lot. And I just wanted more growth in my career and, and the healthcare industry kind of opened my eyes a little bit. And now I'm, I'm with Medpricer talking to hospitals every day about their purchase services, which is like a third party service that all hospitals have and being able to manage that through our software platform. And so still in the SaaS world, but I feel like since it's a smaller company, I'm able to like really talk to our customers and like see some of the challenges that they have and really learning about how I can help them. And I would say that is probably the most exciting part is like hearing their feedback. And then of course, talking to new prospects too, who are like, oh my gosh, this would, this would be amazing. It would be a game changer. And so that's what I really enjoy about it. And so didn't plan to be in sales, but been enjoying it. And that's kind of, I don't really see myself doing anything else at this point. Yeah. As someone's out there and they're like thinking about getting into sales and it wasn't necessarily their major in college. I don't know if it is a major. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not something that they definitely thought of when they were thinking of careers. You know, what advice right. would you have for them or what's been your experience? Yeah, I would say if you're not sure what you really want to do, but you want to kind of jumpstart your professional career, I would definitely recommend a sales job because if the skills are very moldable and teachable if you have the right leadership and mentor, whichever organization you're going into. And yeah, I would say then you can kind of figure out which industry or what you feel more passionate to like talking about. But I would definitely advise it because it's taught me so much. And now I'm like face to face and going to conferences and learning how to carry conversations face to face, which is totally different than doing everything kind of over the phone or for uh, email. And so now my role is changing, but it's still kind of the same thing. And so I would say it's going to help you in the long run too, because communication 
is a really, really valuable skill set that will take you very far in life. And if you learn how to carry conversations well and learn to kind of figure out where your place is and how that person's like motives or what they're interested in talking about. And then, I mean, really it's, it's just selling because you're trying to figure out how to navigate that conversation to make it exciting for them too. And that's what you do in sales. Big time. And every other job will be super easy after you've been in SDR or in sales. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what challenges do you face? Because you know, now you're in cybersecurity, now you're in the healthcare industry. These are big, complicated, mm-hmm. you know, industries that are very set in their ways and you're going to these conferences and, and stuff like that. So what challenges are you facing? as you get into this career? Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind you know, for the healthcare industry is, yeah, like this, the status quo thing is like getting people to be more technology oriented and whereas maybe they're operating manually and off paper and having a really big team of people kind of doing a manual process rather than having a more automated system where it, you can kind of like log in, everything's online. And so it's it's very old school in that sense. And then there's a lot of compliances that they have to follow. And so there's a lot of challenges about like changing what what their day-to-day operations looks like. So that's the first thing that would come to mind. And then the second would be a more personal challenge, which is that I'm really young and starting in my career. And as I mentioned that I'm going to these conferences and you know, going face to face and I'm a woman that's in sales and I'm a woman of color and I'm entering an industry that is very predominantly white male and older men. And that's kind of how it is. And and I'm trying to break that barrier. I'm trying to get people to like take me seriously. And I want to get past them looking at me through my appearance and looking at me or listening to like what I have to say and looking at me in a different lens than what I appear. There's definitely a lot that I have to overcome and I'm still learning how to navigate that. But it's been really fun because of the results that I have been seeing for our customers. And how do you do that? I mean, how do you break through that kind of barrier that people put up, you know, almost instinctively? I mean, I don't know if you figured it out yet, but I mean, do you have any tips on what people can do if they're confronting that? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they're people. And that's where I really feel like my psychology knowledge helps me out because sales has to do a lot with psychology. And so, I mean, I'm very observant. And so I'll like pick up on things here, there, and I'll just, I'll just comment on them or I'll ask them questions about themselves. Like, Oh, you know, you know, where are you coming from? Or, and they'll tell me about their families or like, Oh, they're local. And they'll tell me about this. And so getting kind of like getting to a more personal level. And then there, I can almost like physically see their shoulders like dropping a little bit and then they're like a lot more attentive and then they're like oh okay so tell me about you what do you do what's your company about and then that's that's when I go for it so so just maybe just talking to them initially as like who they are as a person has been helping and that's more face-to-face I would say over the phone or email I try to like have a positive energy and and attitude. And I hope that like they can pick that up over the phone or if I'm talking to customers like on a conference call, like, like if you smile, I know they can't see you, but they can feel it and it helps. So just like having that young kind of energy, I think that's not something that they're used to. And so I feel like it does kind of help me out in that way, but yeah, still learning. So that's what I find has helped so far. Leverage your strengths. And just, it sounds like, you know, that you're up against a challenge. I mean, even more than what most people would have to deal with to get your message across, but you're like leveraging your strength to put, bring your personality and bring their guard down a little bit. So they'll actually talk to you. It seems. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so what was it like on the sales development side? Because, you know, you had to do everything over the phone and by email. And I would think that in a big industry, like that, that's used to doing things a certain way that they were pretty resistant to your message. Did you find that? Yeah, yeah, that does come across. And what happens is that because they have like the lack of of knowledge, they kind of rely on a third party to kind of do everything for them. So it's mostly like their contracts that they are needing help with. And they're like, oh, well, you know, we have someone else that the consultant, for example, that, that takes care of that for us. And then so they kind of 
offload a lot of a lot of that work and rather like being independent and knowing like where their spend is actually going there you kind of have to re-educate them and almost enlighten them that they're able to do this on their own if they really want to learn the tool and the software itself and being able to have their whole team log into it too and so that's like a totally new concept because right now they don't know what everyone else is working on. They know their own work and their own projects, but the rest of the team is a challenge. And so you kind of have to re-educate that there could be a different way to approach their day-to-day workflow. Got it. And, you know, it seems like they probably get a lot of emails and phone calls from different companies. How do you break through to people who are probably, you know, getting a lot of, you know, messages from different vendors just like yourself trying to, you know, get them to take a meeting or take a phone call with you, you know, so that you stand out? Yeah, that's a great question. I definitely, let's say, for example, they say, you know, this is something that we already taken care of, like, we're focusing on it, and we know what to do. And I definitely always agree with them. You know, say, that's great. That's great that you're looking into the signing savings. And that's I'm glad that's a priority for you. All I'm asking for is just for you to compare and just see what's out there to see if maybe there's something that they could be missing out on. If not, you know, that decision is up to them. And so all I'm asking for is just for you to see what's out there. And then it's up to you to decide what you want to do from there. And then they're like, okay, you know, I can take a half an hour meeting and and just see what their product is. And then from there, we can decide to move forward or not. And after accepting that initial meeting, I'm not going to wait, but (laughs) I haven't had anyone say like, you know, this isn't going to work out for us. Like, sorry. And I would say almost every time they're like, wow, okay, this is totally new. This is interesting. Okay, nice. Okay. So like for one, you bring in that you're, you know, bringing together what other people are doing, which is interesting to them because they're kind of isolated. So that's like a really interesting point that you can bring to the table. And then you come at it from the angle that, you know, there's no obligation or anything for this, but you could potentially learn something really valuable. So once you get that going, then they're like, whoa, this is really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And like I mentioned, they're kind of used to a manual, more paper process. And then for them to see a software platform that could do all this for them, it's totally a new market. And new. so that's also the challenge is like, there's an, I mean, we've, our company has been around for like 14 years, but they still don't have a lot of confidence because our name isn't as big. Got it. Most people refer to VanillaSoft as the solution. It's the solution to ensure sales reps make the right number of attempts for every lead across all channels, including email, social, and the phone. It's the solution to serve the rep the next best lead every single time. You need to get your solution at VanillaSoft.com. Okay, so how do you overcome that? I mean, if they've never heard of you, I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that have a similar issue. It's like they've never heard of you. so. You know, how do you break that? You know, I just back it up with our experience and say we've been doing this for 14 years. We've worked with hospitals all over the United States and our data is backed up in that way because we've been in business for so long and we became a software company couple years ago. But so they're not familiar with us as being a software company. And so I'm re-educating them on the branding of the company as well. And then just customer stories. I would say like talking about some of our customers is And what we've done for them, that is the best way for them to say like, oh, well, they're doing it. You know, maybe we can do it too. And just showing the results of what we've done, then then they realize, oh, well, you know, this isn't so bad after all. And, you know, you've got other people on the team. I mean, you know, you've been able to have a lot of success with the program. What advice would you give other people on your team if they're struggling to break through with this audience? Yeah, this is an ongoing challenge. (laughs) So, I mean, we're having more SDRs come on and, you know, I'll be doing, I'll be doing the same thing with them too. And when they start, because it's like, you know, this is the toughest part is the sales development, business development role is extremely challenging. And it really does push you to like, because the highs are high and the lows are low. (laughs) And that's really what sales is. And you have to just think about the reward at the end of it. That's kind of what I give my SDRs is because they're trying to figure out like, oh, I'm like a keep like trying to get this account or this prospect or this lead, whoever, and I'm like not having any luck. I'm like, you have to just keep pushing forward. And if you're staying motivated and staying disciplined, and it's not just about staying on top of your work, it's like your personal life too, because you got to make sure that you're doing what makes you happy because that's going to be the best 
way that you intrinsically motivate yourself to make this something that you're like, okay, I can do this. I can help my team. And also having support around you. I would say if you're able to work really well with the people around you and and you have the support, that's definitely going to help too. If someone's struggling and they come to you and they're just like, ah, you know, I've been doing all this. I took all the training and stuff like that. It's just not working for me. Like, Where should they start? Yeah. And I have been through this myself too where I'll have like a really good week and I'm like, oh yes. And the next week, like nothing. (laughs) I'm like, what's going on? Or a really good month and the next month is, you know, same thing. And so I would say it's tough to figure out what exactly, because you're doing the same thing as you were doing before. So I would say like try to approach a different way of trying to get a hold of that person if that's the issue. Or let's say like a prospect has accepted the meeting and then they didn't show up and now you're trying to like work on rescheduling that. Or maybe they, you know, they said, oh, we need to reschedule and we're working on that. So it's like, it's challenging trying to get time on people's calendar. And that's really what we're asking for is time. And people don't have a lot of time <laughs> yeah, to just exactly. give out like that. So that's really what we're asking for is, is time, right? And I would say just keep trying. And that's really what I would say is you have to try to keep the attitude too, because if they realize that you're kind of struggling a little bit, then they can pick that up over the phone or email too. They they can feel that. And so be consistent in the way that you're the outreach and don't get discouraged. And then as far as like sales development, try going after like, a different title or a different person within the same organization and you know try going that way so it's not always like an end all be all too so i love it and so you know you've been through this and now you know a new position open so now you're getting into sales how did that whole process happen like did they come to you did you have to go to them like how did you make that transition yeah i've been with medpricer for a little over a year now and i was already kind of thinking about the next steps in my career and wanting to see if, if that was there and i mean i was happy already in in my role in the company and so i was kind of just curious and but yeah i was thinking more like next year <laughs> or a couple months down the road, but it happened to be this month. And they're like, are you ready now? And so I was like, yeah, I want to do it. And I think there's never a perfect time when you feel like you're ready. I mean, you just have to do it. And so I would say a little bit of both because I had kind of initiated it at that one year mark, but then my company really like saw the potential in me to grow in my career. Nice. And so you were preparing, you were ready, kind of to some, as much as possible. And then a position opened up, which that's tricky too, because sometimes you're at a company where there's just no positions open and you got to either mm-hmm. hang out or go find another company. But you just happen to, you know, find one that's growing and had something available and went for it. Yeah. And then if that is a situation where the position isn't available, talk to other departments too would be an advice. If you want to continue as an SDR for a little bit longer because you're enjoying it, then I would say be a little bit more patient. But if that is the case where the exact role that you're looking for isn't there, but if you really like the company and the people, then talk to other departments and see if maybe that's something that was of interest to you. Like I know customer success and the business development role, like I see people going like from being an SDR or account executive and then going into that role or marketing. And so I see that the skills are really transferable. So yeah, that's my advice. Yeah, I love that. Try to see what they're working on. See what's available. I mean, the economy is pretty good right now. Most companies have a lot of different positions and sales development doesn't necessarily have to be just going into sales. There's a lot of different positions that are available. So what do you want to do? Like, what's your plan once you crush your sales career (laughs) in the next couple of years? Like, have you thought out further along? No, I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to say no, because... I really am liking what I'm doing now and that's kind of where I see myself going. And I kind of did throw back the idea back and forth about like maybe going back into psychology and, and exploring that. But I really, really enjoy the SaaS space and the SaaS world. And I'm a millennial. I love technology. So (laughs) I think that's really where like the excitement is for me. And I know that I like talking to people and so that's why I feel like this is it. And I, maybe I should be thinking further down the road, but right now I'm really enjoying it. 
Well, there you go. And I definitely, I feel like it's very inspirational for people who might be newer to their career or they're thinking about getting into sales development to follow your path. So I'm excited to see how things work out and definitely track your progress. If folks want to get in touch with you or connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, LinkedIn is great. I'm on there and email or or phone too. I have both of those on my profile. So I'm very lucky for all the people that I've met. You know, at 10 Bound, I had a great experience at the conference that you hosted. I met a lot of connections there as well as just people on LinkedIn that I've been just seeing you know, your podcast or other podcasts and looking at advice from other SDR to SDR or like, how do I transition from going into a closing role? And so I've just been getting a lot of advice from like the LinkedIn community. And I'm like, so thankful for that, just connecting people that I would have never had the reach otherwise. Yes, I love that. And thank you for coming. I met you initially at the Gong meeting, right? Where we had a yeah, panel. That's the yeah, that's the meetup. Yeah, yeah, that was so fun. And I mean, it's just like, especially if you're newer to your career, get out, go to events, meet people, like walk up to people that you wouldn't otherwise walk up to, because you never know where it could lead. I mean, you never know where this conversation could lead to something amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're a customer of Gong. And so like, I love using their tool. And so I love being on the other side of it. And it's really fun to see like, oh, I, you know, this tool really works well for my sales team. And then when I'm hearing our customers talk about how much they like our platform, I like seeing both perspectives. And so, yeah, definitely get out there. I mean, if you had talked to me a couple years ago, I don't think I would have ever like approached you and introduced myself to you. And I would have been way more shy and (laughs) probably would not have agreed to a podcast in the first place. But that's why I like it because like, it's so different to my day-to-day personality. Like David and I were talking earlier and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a planner. I like to have everything planned out. And sales isn't like that. And so you have to really think of the things and go with the flow and you get objections thrown at you and you have to learn how to overcome them. And it challenges me every day. And I do have that like voice inside sometimes. It's like, oh, like I'm like I don't want to do that. Oh, I'm I'm a little too nervous or too shy. And then I'm like, no, I have to go say hi to David. I have to go to this you know SDR meetup. I have to go to this conference and I have to say hi. I have to make my presence known. And even when I'm doing my job, I'm like, I have to make sure that I'm pushing past that barrier because I always am going to want more for myself, and I don't want to be the one getting in the way of myself. I love that. That's so true. It's getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah, and that's the hardest part. I know. The comfort zone is so comfortable and easy and it's like uh it's like binge watching Netflix with like a burrito, you know? It's like it's so <laughs> good, but after 20 years of that, it's pretty ugly. So, you got out of your comfort zone and you're going into a whole new world here with the closing role. So, I'm excited to hear how it goes. Yeah, and if anyone has any advice for me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you will. I think you get a lot of connections from this. And just, you know, really appreciate you coming on the show and being on the Sales Development Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Sales Development Podcast, the only audio forum 100% focused and dedicated to sales development with your host, David Delaney. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube and take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes. Your support makes our show possible. If you are struggling with your sales development program, contact us at 10bound.com for a no-obligation exploratory call. Again, that's 10bound.com.